Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to the Archives. Revan is often considered to be one of the greatest Jedi and military commanders in all of galactic history. He is often highly praised for his insight into the Force after having experienced both the light and dark, and having found balance between the two of them. With his legendary skills, he was able to wage a war against the Mandalorians, Jedi, and Sith during his lifetime, and nearly won each time. However, a huge part of Revan's story is also frequently forgotten, or perhaps ignored. These are his atrocities, and the terrors that he brought upon the galaxy during each of his wars. While most would immediately point to his actions during the Jedi Civil War when he became Darth Revan, the most egregious of his crimes would create a devastating force of nature that would cause ripples in time itself. As a direct result of Revan's actions and command, the being known as Darth Nihilus would be born, a freak of the Force, and a living horror that nearly consumed all life in the galaxy itself. Though the exact origins of Nihilus and the weapon that created him are still a bit hazy, in this video, we aim to decrypt the mystery of Darth Nihilus' creation and make clear the purpose and function of the Mass Shadow Generator, the superweapon responsible for this travesty. The Jedi Mandalorian War was one of the bloodiest conflicts that the galaxy had seen by that point in time. In comparison to previous wars, the loss of life on both sides was astronomical, and it was becoming more and more clear as the war waged on that the Mandalorian Mandalorians were not going to go out easily. Revan did his best, but eventually the entire debacle developed into a war of attrition, with each side gaining ground inch by inch and losing hundreds for each inch gained. Revan soon decided that the war needed to end one way or another, and that's when Revan and his commander Mitra Surik went to the Zabrak scientist known as Bao Dur and had him create a superweapon that would become known as the Mass Shadow Generator. To understand why this is so terrible, there is a lot of mystery and confusion surrounding what the Mass Shadow Generator actually is, with the main consensus being that it can control Malachor V's unique gravitational pull. However, this only scratches the surface of this horrific weapon. First, we need to understand what a mass shadow is. When one is traveling through hyperspace, they essentially enter an alternate dimension parallel to real space. In real space, there are celestial bodies such as planets, asteroids, stars, all of which have their own gravitational signatures. This much as we know to be true. Well, in hyperspace, these planetoids don't exactly exist in the physical sense, but their gravitational signatures still do, which threaten to pull ships out of hyperspace should they venture too close. These gravitational signatures are what are called mass shadows, or to say in another way, they are the hyperspace shadows of the planetoid's gravitational mass. What the mass shadow generator was capable of doing was creating artificial mass shadows in real space, doing so by manipulating the unique gravitational properties of the planet of Malachor V. So Revan would engage Mandalore the Ultimate elsewhere while luring the Mandalorian fleet to Malachor V and destroy them all. There, Mitra Surik and the Republic fleet would be waiting and would engage them, and it was during this battle Revan gave the order, and Mitra would have the mass shadow generator officially activated for the first time. What resulted was a vortex of gravitational energy, rending huge portions of both the Mandalorian and the Republic fleet out of space and directly onto the planet's surface. The devastation was catastrophic. Hundreds of thousands of beings, Jedi, Mandalorian, Republic trooper, and innocent civilian alike were all killed instantly. Malachor V was almost completely destroyed itself, and what remained on the planet were its planetoid chunks precariously held together by tectonic anomalies. The sheer amount of life lost was so great that it caused Mitra Surik to forcefully cut herself off from the Force, doing so that she would not sense the mass death and lose her mind or die from the overwhelming disturbance that it caused in the Force. It was this disturbance, though, that had another effect. It created the being known as Darth Nihilus. This disturbance was actually what is known as a wound in the Force, all of which funneled into one man. One man who survived the catastrophe, warping this man and turning him into Nihilus, a being of pure hunger. The concept of a wound in the Force is the second most understood aspect of this story. To understand why Nihilus became what he is, we must explain the wound. The Force is a living being, 
considering it is life itself, and its energies permeate throughout all life in the universe. However, when a large sum of that life is destroyed very quickly, it causes something like a tear in the fabric of the force itself. Just like the body of a living being that may retain an injury by having an arm severed or a stabbing, the force can also retain wounds in itself from phenomena such as Malachor V, Alderaan, or Order 66. Mass Loss of Life Wounds in the force are pockets of darkness, filled with pain, terror, and the screams of those who lost their lives. This will generate echoes that ripple across the galaxy, reaching all of those who are Force-sensitive, creating what we know as disturbances. However, on this day, something completely different happened, whose name we have never learned, suffered the greatest. It is unknown who he once was, as some speculate he was a Republic trooper, or even a Jedi. But the most accepted answer is that he was a nobody, a nobody with a family and friends living his life in peace on Malachor V, living as a civilian before a war that he did not ask for was brought to his doorstep. In the wake of the mass shadow generator, and the horror that resulted from it, the immense pain he felt at losing everything he loved caused the wound in the Force to enter into his very being, corrupting his soul, if you will. Aimlessly wandering the wasteland that was once his home, dodging tectonic storms, the man would become Nihilus, defined by the hunger he felt growing in his belly. He could not explain it, but he felt as though there was a hole within him, ravenously craving energy, and threatening to consume him if he did not feed. It was this hole that would consume what he once was, a simple man. Walking for miles, he eventually came across another survivor, and the man couldn't help himself. Reaching out with the Force, he drained the life of the other survivor and consumed his very essence. It was an extremely unpleasant experience, but then for just a moment, just one, the pain and anguish dissolved away. It was far from bliss, but it was at least a break from agony. But then, the hunger returned, more ravenous than before. The man would wander around, consuming all he could find, until he was found by the Sith by the name of Treya. Treya offered to train him in the Force, offered him the title of Darth, offered him the role to become a Sith. This alone did not appeal to Nihilus, but it was the powers of the Sith that would allow him to feed his endless hunger. It was here where Nihilus shed away the man that he once was completely, and was now Darth Nihilus, the Lord of Hunger, Lord of the Sith. His hunger eventually started to chew at his very mortal flesh, and his spirit was forced to inhabit a mask and a cloak, remaining somewhat corporeal in order to achieve the one thing he always desired. His new mission was to feed on any Jedi he could find to take his revenge, and then would come the galaxy. To Nihilus, life was pain, and therefore, life did not deserve to be around. This is how the monster was born by the direct actions of a man people claim was a great Jedi hero. An innocent person had everything they had ripped away from them, and they were forced to become a horror beyond comprehension. Nihilus never wanted to be a Sith. After training with Treya and allying with Darth Sion, Nihilus never cared for the Sith cause, and only desired to feed. Consuming life was all that he had, and the Sith were only a means to that end. It was likely that Nihilus would have just as soon turned on his Sith brethren and fed on them when the time came. But anyway, my friends, these were the origins of Darth Nihilus and the consequences of Darth Revan. What are your thoughts on this? Should we hold Revan responsible? Or was this the right call? What are your thoughts on this man that would become Nihilus and the idea of a mass shadow? Share your thoughts on this monstrosity in the comments down below. And as always, my friends, may the Force be with you.